So good morning and welcome to the Sunday service for the Center for Spiritual Living Space Coast. My name is Reverend Dr. Ron Fox. And uh, this would be a good time phones to turn off phones or turn them down. And if there's anybody watching this this week that's never been to a Center for Spiritual Love, that's never been to a Center for Spiritual Living, I was looking at my wife and the word love came out. Um, if there's anybody watching it this week that's never been to a Center for Spiritual Living, we believe there's one God, many paths to that God, and we're here to love, honor, and support you, no matter what your divine path is. And the Center for Spiritual Living Space Coast is a safe haven for people of all beliefs and lifestyle, whoever you are, and wherever you find yourself on your journey of faith, you're welcome here. Our practitioner this morning is my wife, Becky. I'll be the reader. Um, next, just a couple of announcements. Next week is unexpected income. So set the intention that somehow unexpected income will come into your life. Next week is also our board meeting. And April 29th is the last Saturday of the month. And usually on the last Saturday of the month, we have a luncheon. This time we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to have a potluck at Tom and Sue Carter's house. And after the meal, Barb Loftus is going to talk to us about her trip to Africa, which anybody that's uh, on Facebook and seen it, it was a trip of a lifetime. What they did, the animals they they saw. I, I was talking to her on the phone just to, and, and she was telling me when they were sleeping in, I guess it was a big tent and it had mesh and um, she heard noises in the middle of the night and she got up and she didn't go outside, but she looked and there was a hippopotamus about 20 feet away. Um, and if you know anything about Africa, hippos kill more people than any other animal. Um, but she said it was really interesting. Even lions, for some reason, won't cross over the, the netting and they also will leave you alone if you're in a Jeep. But if you're walking, you're a meal. Anyway, so it's April 29th at noon. I, I, um, I did send out an email about it and I'll do another one with Tom and Sue's address, but we'll be eating from noon to one-ish and then Barb will come on at one and do the presentation, which will be about an hour. And then at two o'clock, she'll answer any questions. And then Sue said, people that wanna stay can walk on the beach can play bocce, you said, right? And so we can have a good time together. Again, it's Saturday, April 29th at noon. And if you're gonna come, let me know that you are and what you're gonna bring so we could make sure you're gonna bring dessert, right? So we have two dessert people so far and either a ham or a ham. Oh, okay, cool. Corn salad. Corn salad, and we'll do a green salad, so. And a pasta salad. And a pasta salad. Okay, so. And so as we begin this morning's opening prayer, I just invite each one of us just to take this few seconds of quiet time to open up our hearts, to open up our minds and be in this grateful place. And so from this place of love and gratitude, just recognizing my oneness with each and every person here, this oneness that is infinite spirit, that is infinite love 
and light and energy it is all around us. It is within us. And I'm knowing my own oneness in this infinite power that it is surrounding me. It is always expressing through me, as me, and for me. I'm knowing this for each and every person who is right here. I'm knowing that this morning is one of great blessing. And as we celebrate the meaning of Easter, it is the awakening. It is the renewal, renewing of each one of us. Our purpose here in this physical realm. Rebirth. Growth. It is the message this morning coming from Reverend Dr. Ron, as he too is being guided and directed by infinite spirit through his words, through his wisdom, bringing a rebirth to each of us, an awakening, a resurrection knowing that at this moment, right here, right now, that it's taking place in each of us. And as we allow divine spirit's energy to rise up, I'm knowing that new opportunities, a new purpose is taking place in each of our lives. And so for this and so much more, I just give thanks. I'm knowing that blessings are taking place right now. I just give thanks. I release it and just let it be. And so it is. So um, the reading this morning is uh, from Joseph Campbell in a piece he titled, Thou Art That. One must remember the central truth about Easter and Passover. We are called out of the house of bondage. Even as the Jews were called out of their bondage in Egypt, we are called out of bondage in a way in which the moon throws off its shadow to emerge anew, in the way the life throws off its shadow of death. Easter and Passover have the same roots. We are called out of bondage. If we think of the crucifixion in only historical terms, we lose the reference of the symbol. Immediately to ourselves, Jesus left his mortal body on the cross to go to the Father with whom he was one. We, similarly, are to identify with the eternal life that is within us. So again, good morning. I just want to get some coffee. And um, my title this morning is Surrendering into a New Life. And I want to begin with a quote from Eric Butterworth, who kind of sums up the meaning of, of Easter, Christmas, of Easter and Passover. And, and he wrote, Easter is a time to take a new look at ourselves and contemplate the divinity in us, the depths of our own God potential. It is a time to reappraise the principle that makes all overcoming possible. So Easter is about us having Christ potential. We, we, we see Jesus as the great example rather than the great exception. And I've said this before, but what, what Ernest Holmes meant when he said that is, if Jesus was the great example, all we could do is really step aside and admire everything that Jesus did. However, if we see Jesus as the great example, we can follow in suit. In fact, Jesus said, you shall do greater things than me. We, we, in other words, we can emulate him. And I think um, 
maybe Meister Eckhart put it best. He wrote, what good is it to me if this eternal birth of the divine son takes place unceasingly, but does not take place within myself? And so he's saying, you know, what good is the story of the resurrection if it's only about one person and it's not about me being able to resurrect my life, being able to, to, to be more. Resurrection is about new beginnings. We die to one experience to be resurrected in a bigger, a larger experience. And it's not necessarily a one-time thing in our life. You know, we, we maybe lose a job, we get a divorce, we lose a loved one, we, we, we become empty nesters, whatever it is, we can have these experiences more than once in our life. And it's where our old identity dies and a new one can be born. And so I, I wanna read something. I've read this uh, a couple of years ago and it really brings, brings it home to me. And it's a piece that I saw in, a, in the book, Guidance from the Darkness by Reverend Mary Murray Shelton. And, and here we go. Dear friend, I found this magazine in a dirty rundown motel room. When I went into that room, I was an alcoholic and an addict. When I left, I was a shining, clean and free woman. I was free from my obsession for alcohol and drugs. I was free for the first time in many years. My life before this consisted of being locked up in hospital wards, jails, and prisons several dozen times. One by one, I gave away my children. During one of my more desperate times of loneliness, I stole one of my children from her new mother. For this insanity, I went to prison for child stealing. I never knew what resentments were. What I felt was a deep hate for the whole world, most of all, myself. I felt guilty too, and knew what it was to be very lonely. The fears I had were many, and some were nameless. I made several attempts at suicide. This was my life before I found that beautiful Science of Mind magazine two years ago in a dirty little room. I read the words that told me God's dwelling place is within man, and that if I would still my thoughts, I would realize his presence. May God bless you, my friend, and may he bless those wonderful people who wrote the words that started a chain of miracles. With love, Jane Doe. And um, Reverend Mary said that Jane's healing began when she hit rock bottom. But in order for the healing to take place, she had to be willing to let go of the life she had been living. And when Jane left that room, she had no idea what would happen next. She was just committed to the new idea that God's loving presence was within her and, and always and always will be. And, and so you see what I said, we die to an old identity and a new one is born. And I thought that story is so perfect to explain what Easter is all about. It's about freeing ourselves from limited living and finding a new way of living and being, waking up to who we are and asking the question, who am I and why am I here? And um, I read this week, I was actually thinking about Sue Ed and Mihai when I read this, um, about a lady named Megan McKenna, who is a Catholic writer and speaker. And the reason I thought of you guys, she was leading a, uh, a book study group when somebody yelled out at her, have you ever brought somebody back from the dead? 
And her response was, yes. She said, every time I bring hope into a situation, every time I bring hope and take away somebody's despair, every time I forgive and give them back their dignity, every time I listen to someone and affirm their life, every time I speak the truth, every time I fight injustice, every time I bring people back from the dead. That's what resurrection is about. And we can all do that. All of us here can do that. Like Jane did for her life, Megan said she's doing for other people's life. And, and Ernest Holmes, Ernest Holmes said that, that we, um, we build tombs for ourselves. He said, we have bound ourselves with fear, superstition, and unbelief. And he said, yet there's always a voice within us that's saying, arise and come forth. Let me, let me read to you what he wrote. He said, no man ever walks life's road alone. There is ever another who walks with him. This is his inner self, the undying reality. We must not look afar to see the Christ, for he is ever near at hand. He is always within us. So I was um, reading, reading something. I actually read this a while back, um, and it really interested me. There's a, there's a Bible quote that probably most of us have heard at one time or other, and it's um, when Jesus is on the cross, he is um, supposed to have said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And, and I read that many modern Bible scholars don't believe those were the words he said. What they believe he said was, my God, my God, it is for this purpose I have come. Big difference, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Versus, my God, my God, it is for this purpose I have come. And so if, if that's where you're coming from, if that's what you believe he said, it seems to me the next logical question is, so what's the purpose? What is that purpose he was talking about? And I think it's the same purpose that we're all here for, to recognize and actualize our own divinity and then to live it. I mean, if you recognize it and actualize it and you don't live it, it's kind of not worth it. Um, so we, we believe that we can create the life that we want. We can create the story that we want to live. The true message is that we need to roll away the stone of lack and limitation, to roll away the stone that says, you can't have your dream, to roll away the stone that says you're not smart enough or you're not whatever enough, to roll away whatever the stone is that says you can't actualize your life. That's the purpose that we have come here for. And you know, when Jesus was at his friend Lazarus's grave, he didn't ask God to roll away the stone because God doesn't do that. God doesn't interfere in, in our affairs. We need to roll away the barriers that keep life from flowing through us. And we can do it as Holmes wrote because there's always another that walks with us. So I, I wanna read something to you that Albert Camus wrote. He said, in the midst of hate, I found there was within me an invincible love. In the midst of tears, I found there was within me an invincible smile. In the midst of chaos, I found there was within me an invincible calm. I realized through it all, 
that in the midst of winter, I found there was within me an invincible summer. And that makes me happy. For it says that no matter how hard the world pushes against me, within me, there's something stronger, something better pushing right back. So you might ask yourself, in, in what ways can we, I kind of touched on this before, but in what ways can we practice resurrection in, in our own life? You know, and one of the ways it seems to me is we can open our hearts and mind and soul to the pain of the world, you know, and God knows there's enough injustice, enough poverty, enough hunger, enough whatever going on in our world that we can't speak out for, we can't work to, to stop. Um, we, we can live, we can live in the present moment. We can pray for other people. We can forgive. And when we do all of that, when we bring hope to somebody who's hurting, when, when we stop and bring joy to people around us, when we work for justice, freedom, and equality, um, when, when we give our voice to that, we're, we're actually we're actually bringing a resurrection uh, about. You know, I was telling Becky the, the other day, I, um, Becky wasn't feeling well, so I, I went to Publix by myself. And when I was walking out, there was a lady um, in, in uh, one of those carts. You know, she obviously couldn't walk and she was reaching for something. And I, I went over to her and I said, do you need some help? Can I do something for you? And she said, no, I'm good. Thank you. And I started to walk away. And she called out. She said, you're really a, a good man. And I thought that was, I actually, when I was telling Becky, I started crying. Because it was, it was so touching. And that's kind of what, what we're talking about. I mean, you know, doesn't take a lot to be there, to be there for, for somebody else. So I want to close with... Um, this is something I actually love this, this piece. Um, it's by Howard Thurman. And I try to read it at least once a year here. It's, it's called The Moments of High Resolve. And he, write, he wrote, despite the dullness and barrenness of the days that pass, if I search with due diligence, I can always find the deposit left by some former radiance, but I had forgotten. At the time, it was full-orbed, glorious, and resplendent. I was sure I would never forget. In the moment of fullness, I was sure that it would illumine my path for all the rest of my journey. I had forgotten how easy it is to forgive, to forget. There was no intent to betray what seemed so sure at the time. My response was whole clean, authentic, but little by little, there crept into my life the dust and grit of the journey. Details, lower level demands, all kinds of cross currents, nothing momentous, nothing overwhelming, nothing flagrant, just wear and tear. If there had been some direct challenge, a clear cut issue, I would afford it to the end, and beyond. In the quietness of this place, surrounded by the all-pervading presence of God, my heart whispers, keep fresh before me the moments of my high resolve, that in fair weather or in foul, in good times or in tempests, in the days when the darkness and the foe are nameless or familiar, I may not forget in which, that which, my life is committed. Keep fresh before me the moments of my high resolve. God bless you. Happy Easter. Happy Passover.
and thank you for being here. She's terrific. So I'm gonna skip the offertory because we don't need to do it with, with all of us here. And I'm just gonna go into our closing prayer and then we'll do our closing song and the affirmation. So I, um, I just give thanks for knowing that each one of us can have our own personal resurrection, that each and every one of us has the power, has the power to move from wherever we are to a higher place of expressing spirit in our life that each and every one of us can move through wherever we are and say yes to that divine presence, to knowing that, as Meister Eckhart wrote, that the resurrection isn't a one-time thing or shouldn't be a one-time thing, that it's about the Easter story is about each and every one of our lives having new beginnings, releasing what doesn't serve anymore and moving into a place that does serve us, that serves our growth, that serves our spiritual power, that recognizes that divine presence that's within each and every one of us that recognizes that at our deepest core, we are one with spirit. And that oneness is love. And so for all of this and so much more, for the knowledge of all of this and so much more, and the ability to bring it into our lives, I just give thanks and I release this word and I let it be. And so it is. So we can do our closing song and then the affirmation and we'll stick around and chat. <laughs>